So let me see. Now we are recording. And also I'm going to put a auto transcript because it's very it's very useful. Now a lot of people doesn't doesn't you know hear the audio. Sometimes they rather to just read the comments, so it's better. Right. Okay. Okay. So um should we go ahead and start then? Yeah, yeah, we are ready. Okay. Great. So thank you so much, Ubish Yarin. Um, for taking time to speak with uh, with me today. And uh, we're here to talk about one of my favorite topics, one of my favorite destinations in the world, Mexico City, one of the world's largest cities, the largest city in, 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 uh, in North America, one of the largest cities in this hemisphere. It's an amazing place. And so I always love to have an excuse to talk about Mexico City. So Ubish is really an expert on Mexico City. He's involved with the travel and, and tourism industry there and, and social media channels and, and, and a lot of content that he creates. So he, uh, I think we were speaking with the, with the perfect person about a, an amazing destination. So Ubish, uh, to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from originally and, um, and how long you've been in, in, in Mexico City and also how did you get involved with the whole travel and tourism thing? Sure, Mark, no worries. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, well, I am born and raised in Mexico City. I am completely Chilango, which I don't know if you know the term. It's how the people of Mexico City are called. Sometimes a few people has, uh, they don't like that. But personally, I think that it's how, how it's, a, it's a perfect fit to describe us. No? So I have lived here my whole life, 32 years. And I started to get involved in the tourism business like maybe now, like eight years ago, I think. And I have seen the tourism change so much. Like before it was completely different. And then, you know, food documentaries started to appear. A Coco movie started to appear. And that changed a lot the tourism business here. So it has been very interesting to see how all of this has changed over the last few years. Yeah, a lot, a lot of exciting changes. And I think people are getting to know more and more about Mexico City who don't live in Mexico. And so they realize what all that it has to offer. So, and how, can you tell us a little bit also about how you first got involved with social media channels and, and the services that you offer and, and, you know, what is driving you? What, what motivates you to create so much great content about Mexico City? Sure. Um, well, uh, I was pretty much a, I think I started with Instagram uh, I, and I started actually to kind of uh, document a little bit of the of the food tours that I started to give with a friend. This was basically helping her with, a, with her really new tour, food tourism business. That's how I started. And then little by little, honestly, I didn't uh, focus on, on social media. I was pretty much just working with her and I felt great. I was like, people is paying me for taking them to eat tacos. It's paying me for taking them to the markets that I have been my whole life. It's crazy, you know? So little by little, I started to get a lot of the same questions over and over. People wanted to uh, for me to explain them how to go to the pyramids, how to go to the floating gardens, how to go to the Lucha Libre. And there was a point that actually I got a little bit tired of it because we got super busy kind of quickly with the tours. So I was doing the same questions over and over and over. So I was like, all right, I'm going to make a video in YouTube. And over there, I'm going to explain you step by step how you can go on your own to any of those things that you ask me. And if you want me to take you like on a private tour, you know, with a driver that we organize something different, you can also do that. But I give you all the tools, everything that you need so you can go on your own, which I think that it's a great way to experience a city also. No, you don't you don't need to take tours everywhere. Also, if, if you're learning, learning Spanish, you want to practice a little bit. So that's a great way because in Mexico City, maybe sadly, but also it's a it's a good opportunity. Not many people speak English, right? Only if you stay in the touristy neighborhoods. Here is not like Cancun. No, or like Baja here, a lot of the people doesn't speak English. So I think that it was pretty much to fix a little bit of my of my frustrations that people was always asking me the same stuff. Right. So you kind of became uh, you quickly realized what are the most common questions? What's the information that people are most likely to ask about Mexico City? So you were able to kind of package it in different ways 
and, and, and present it so to help people, help travelers out. That's great. And so where did you learn English? Because you're so, you're so bilingual. I'm jealous of you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have to confess that it's a, a, my grandfather, he actually was an illegal immigrant in California for many, many years. He worked in restaurants. He worked in diners, actually. So he teached to my mom. And uh, he told to my mom, you have to learn English because these give me a lot of opportunities. When I was there, he, he ran away from his home. He, fled, he went to the United States, to California. And my mom became actually an English teacher. But maybe you don't know this by experience, but if your mom is your teacher, it usually don't work well. Uh, but she gave me a lot of tools. Like she always put, you know, stickers everywhere. She, we always listen to shows in English, you know, like TV shows, movies, and all of that. So she gave me a huge step. Uh, but also, it was a lot of me, of my personal interests, uh, because I used to be a lot into video games and uh, a lot into, because here in a few channels, you can watch. Uh, American TV shows in English and uh, and I you know I really didn't enjoy subtitles so yeah that helped me I think that's good yeah pop culture music TV video games can all be a big help with learning another language right that's what yes. that's what's helped me with with Spanish actually listening to Daniela Roma and things like that <laughs> yeah. anyway because I'm older <laughs> so uh, so let's talk a little bit about um about the current situation, because right now, you know, the world is in, the pandemic is still here, unfortunately, around the world. And so things are not, not normal, really, anywhere in the world right now. So a lot of people are probably wondering, you know, what is it like in Mexico City right now? How would you describe the current situation? Well, exactly right now, at the date that we are recording this, which is, um, what day is today? <laughs> January 12th, 2021, right? January 12th, exactly. Uh, right now, we have had a lockdown in Mexico City since like before Christmas, like around the 20th of December. So it feels very similar to the first lockdown that happened on, the, on March uh, because they tell you it's only going to be for a couple of weeks. No? And then the date, it's almost there. And then they are like, all right, we're going to extend this another two weeks. And you're like, oh, my God, I feel that I have already lived this. No. So right now, it was supposed to end this lockdown on the 10th of January, but it's extended to the 17th. And I am pretty sure that they are going to be, that they are going to extend it again. Though there are a lot of things that, um, you know, here the lockdown doesn't mean like, um, because when this started, I, I was in Peru and over there lockdown means curfew hour, uh, nobody goes out from this um, time to this time. If they see two people together in the streets, there's the military in the streets and they tell you, what are you doing here? You shall not be here, go to your house. Here, it's not that hard, no? Which honestly, at the beginning, I was like, it should be like that. But then I saw how also Peru got into chaos because apparently they were kind of uh, taking the people that they were in the streets to jail uh, for a night <laughs> and over there COVID spread. So, you know, I think honestly for a city of this size, uh, maybe this is strategy that they are doing that is just kind of a partial lockdown, like recommended lockdown, like please, if you don't go out, if you don't have to go out, don't go out. I think that it's actually the thing that it will work the best because many, many people rely on a, on a daily job. Many people rely on, on the income that they will get daily. So if you're lucky enough that you don't have that, you can stay in your house, please stay. But you know, it's not that easy. You, you start to go crazy, it's, it's, you know, all lockdown in your house. So that's how is the situation over here. <laughs> and so uh, restaurants and stores are open, is, is, that, is that correct? Yes. So in the first lockdown that we had before, they weren't, but now they are only for okay. takeaway and delivery. And, uh, and actually a few restaurants are, because from what I have heard, a few restaurants, they were still respecting that they are not like essential needs, you know, like medicine, doctors, pharmacies, things like that. 
So mm -hmm. they were kind of a pushing to be open, but a lot of people is not buying from, from there, you know? So that's actually a good thing if tourists come because they are the ones that eat in the restaurants, even that it's for takeaway because they are the ones that don't cook over here, you know, because maybe they don't know where to shop, the ingredients and things like that. Like that. And it's still for them, it's affordable. So there's a lot of mixed opinions, honestly. Like I don't even myself, I consider that I have one opinion, no? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a very complicated situation that we're all living in today. And one thing, the last time I was, in, I was I've been in Mexico City twice in 2020. So just my last visit was in August. So it was during the pandemic. And one thing I was very impressed with the way that people that just the general public in Mexico City was dealing with the pandemic because almost everybody's wearing a mask, people yeah. are practicing social distancing, and the restaurants, I don't know how they aren't tell me, but you know, that the seating was a little more distance yeah. apart and it wasn't 100% capacity. Um, and the good thing also in Mexico City, since you have rather good weather year round, you know, it gets cool, but it's not cold like New York City or Chicago. So it's easier to eat outdoors and stay outdoors and be healthy. But I love, I love the fact that so many people, you know, wear masks and, you know, they yeah. were, they're doing what they can to stay safe if they have to go out. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so that's a good thing. It's, it's uh, you know, it's uh, maybe, I don't know if you saw this a little bit, but actually in the first lockdown that we had, not many people was wearing the face mask. But now that a huge part of the population has, has experienced what is to be worried that a family, that a family member has COVID, what is the, the frustration that you hear in the news that there is no rooms in the, in the, in the hospitals, that the, there is a lack of oxygen tanks, now, pretty much everyone, I will say that 90% of the people wears a face mask, but it's because we have learned in the, in the bad way. Right, right. Yeah, unfortunately, all of us throughout the world, we've had to learn hard lessons. It's been a, been a very difficult year last year, and the next few months, at least, will still be difficult until we all get the, the vaccine. Speaking of the yeah. vaccine, actually, do you have any information about how it's being distributed and rolled out in Mexico City specifically? Well, uh, I have to confess that maybe for the last months, I have had a small detox of news because it was too much stress, honestly. <laughs> so I actually just started to hear a few today and yesterday. Uh, there is a laboratory that is going to start to produce it here, but still the predictions say that I'm, I'm not a high risk member, like I don't have diabetes, I'm not elderly. I'm not a, you know, I don't work in, in medicine. So I, the predictions that they were doing is like, oh, all right, you're going to get the vaccine in 2050. Okay, great. <laughs> so it's going to be slow. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's slow everywhere. So, um, so getting back to travel then, what would be your advice? You know, there are people who are dying to start traveling again. And, and, I, and I actually am ticketed and I have my Airbnb apartment arranged already in, in, in Roma Norte and, um, okay. for March. But so what, when do you think travelers, foreign travelers should start thinking about uh, visiting Mexico City again? Well, um, I, I, like, like I have said in media, I think that this is not the right time to travel. But if you travel, no, because that doesn't mean that everyone is going to do it, like everyone is going to do it. Uh, if you travel everywhere that you go, and especially here in Mexico, if you come, follow the rules what everybody is doing, no? wear your face, face mask, use hand sanitizer, respect that you cannot go to like the bars or restaurants and do parties, no? This is, this is not, your, you know, your backyard when you can just, you know, do whatever that you want here. Say, maybe as something good, we are not as restrict, we don't have a lot of restrictions like in other parts, but it doesn't mean that COVID doesn't exist. You know, COVID exists right. here, you know, and actually that's what I told to, to like the other day that I had an interview. Uh, if you come and you don't take care of yourself, you're the one that has more chance of, you know, being in risk, especially if you don't, you don't speak the language, you don't know how the medical system works, you don't know how to get medicines. So you are the one that is more at risk for us. We have our family, you know, we understand how the city works. At least if it, does, it doesn't work good, we know that it doesn't work good, no, but you're going to have the surprise of your life when you see how bad is the medical system in, medic in Mexico, no? So anyway, just right. respect 
the, the, the rules, respect the social distancing, respect the, the face masks, and uh, and yeah, just don't don't do anything. You know that that it's not it's not conscious. No, the the city we are handling hard the COVID, but we are struggling with it. But also we need to work. Everybody needs to work. Like if for me personally, somebody tells me, "Hey, are you doing tours?" Yes, I am. Not all of them, but just these ones. And it's private tours, which my company has always been private tours. And you have to wear a face mask and all of that. No, so. Yeah, respect the rules that we are having here. Right. I think that's a very good point because no matter where you're traveling, most people should not be traveling right now, bottom line, I think. But yeah. for those who do, and I have been traveling every month, including to Mexico, to four different destinations during the pandemic because I'm a travel writer and a journalist. So I have to write about what's what's happening. Yeah. Um, but if you're traveling, you can't think that you're traveling and you're going to escape the realities of the pandemic. Wherever you go, including Mexico City, the pandemic is everywhere. And so we have to take care of ourselves and take care of other people. The other thing I wanted to mention too, that I was really impressed about in Mexico City, in addition to people wearing masks, is that lately I've been traveling in the United States more too. And in Mexico City, they're doing a lot more than almost every business or hotel that I visited in the United States. Because when um, I was in Mexico City last, and I have a friend who visited last month too, they take your temperature, you know, when you, if you go to a restaurant, they take your temperature. There's someone, they offer you hand sanitizer. Um, when, if you want to go to Bershka or, you know, if you're going to yeah. a, a store, yeah. you may have to wait in line to get in. I don't know if the stores are open now. Are they like no. shopping? They're not. Okay. Well, when they were, when it was a lower uh, uh, alert level, you still, you might have to wait in line outside because they were taking everything very yeah. seriously. Yeah. They take your temperature, give you hand sanitizer, and that you had to do it that way. And hotels as well. In the United States, the hotels are not doing as good a job. Like I'm so much more impressed wow. with what hotels are doing in Mexico because you can't walk into a good a good hotel in Mexico without getting your temperature taken, without being offered hand sanitizer. They'll probably leave, you know, like sanitizing wipes in your in your hotel room too. Yeah. In the United States, you don't get anything. They don't take your temperature. They don't offer you. They they'll be hand sanitizer, but nobody comes and makes you use it. Yeah. And they don't leave anything special in the room usually. So, and so there are things that Mexico City and other cities in Mexico are doing much better, which makes me feel more secure as a traveler. But long story short, we all have to be careful no matter what, right? Um, yes. Yeah. So, so what are some of the most important things for travelers who haven't visited Mexico City before? What would be some of your the most important things that you that you would advise them or recommend for them to, to know or, and to do. Now we're getting to the part where it's the questions, the same questions that everybody always asks you if they if they they haven't been before, right? Yes. So well, if by any chance when you are here, uh, you are we are in a in a full lockdown like now, uh, there's still a few things that you can do. No, especially if you if you like a lot to walk, there's many places to walk. <laughs> if you like uh, ride your bicycle. There's a lot of the parts of the neighborhoods that is great to ride your bicycle, no? So uh, if you like to go outdoors to a park, there's a few parks and, and, and especially talking of Chapultepec that it's open always that one because very few people goes there. Like uh, us, we have to work. It's not like, oh, we are in lockdown, so we're in holidays. No, we have to, <laughs> we are worried, no? Anyway, so there's still things to do when you are in lockdown. Like for example, the tours that I do, it's architecture, it's markets, it's um, Xochimilco, the floating gardens. But if, if it's open when you come, well, you know that we have all the museums. Personally, I will never go to the Frida Kahlo Museum because I don't know if you already have been, but that's the one that they always, everybody goes. And for me, it's the most overpriced, overrated museum that exists. If you really like Diego and Frida, there is the Anahualcali Museum, which that one, it's astonishing, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, we have museums of everything. The Toys Museum is one of the museums that I really like. It's very yes. out of the I went there for path. the first time in August. It's, a, it's amazing. You yeah. can spend all day there just looking at all the toys in the collection. It's great. Yes. Yeah. And very near over there, the downtown, because over there, that area has lots of street art. But also the, there is a section of the downtown that has beautiful street art. But there is a lot of bars, restaurants in that street. Um, yeah, I mean, especially if you like uh, art also, like uh, there is a Sumaya Museum, that one is amazing. 
personally, I like a lot to see antiques and maybe that's even that you don't want to buy, but you just like to look at them. And a lot of the like stores slash galleries of antiques, they are super friendly. And especially right now, honestly, a lot of us are hungry of even having the, the interactions that we used to have before when the tourism was thriving here. No, So that's something that I have seen a lot and I, I experienced it on my own. Right. And our museums are, are closed right now, I assume, or are they open? Right now it's closed. But okay. uh, so when it's right now, because it's the, like the red light, we know it as the red light. When it's the orange light, they can be open and everything it's around 30% of its capacity. So we hope that on January 17, this changes. Okay. Okay. Right. That's good to mention that in Mexico City, well, in all of Mexico, I believe you operate by the semáforos. So the, the, like a traffic light, right? So yeah. Red, yep. red, orange, yellow, and green, right? Every state has a different way of handling it, but in essence, is the same stuff. No, in essence, is a like I, I had a friend on the first lockdown that, that she was in Playa del Carmen, and over there was a very tough lockdown. Over there, it was if you are not going to the grocery store or the drugstore, you don't have to go out. No, and their military is going to like tell you, go into your house. No, what are you doing here? But in most of the places of Mexico, it's much more relaxed, like in Mexico City. So yeah, it depends. Not not all these not not all the states are having the same thing. It, they have it similar, but not the same. Right. So and that might be a good thing for travelers if they're considering. Just like if you're traveling anywhere in the in the world right now, you need to you should do your research ahead of time so you'll know if you know if the destination is is in red the red light stage or green light or somewhere in between. Exactly. I guess nowhere is green right now anywhere. But yeah. um, but yeah, so there's a lot of good stuff to know. Um, well, this time has gone by so quickly because it's so interesting to hear all of your your insight and expertise <laughs> about Mexico City. Before I forget, and I'll put this obviously in writing, you know, in the, on our on the posts that we and the chat YouTube channel as well. But do you want to share all of your media channels? How can people follow you and contact you to find out more? Sure. Well, right now I am promoting more my YouTube channel, which if you don't use YouTube, you can use Twitch. Uh, because I recently discovered that the live streams of cities, like especially because I follow bloggers from New York that they are doing this, they are just live streaming how is the city, they are walking, they are t talking about whatever they see. So I have been doing that on my YouTube and Twitch channel, which both you can find them as Mexico Underground. Uh, if you search it, maybe you will have to put the filter by channels because it's a very, very small channel. But over there, I do them three times a week. You can ask me any question. People has asked me so many weird questions. No? Like, how can I transfer 100K US dollars to a bank account? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I have no idea, but I can research it and, and I can tell, you know? Or they ask me, which neighborhood do you like for, uh, you know, if you travel with your kids? Okay, yeah, I tell you this neighborhood because it has a park, you know, mm -hmm. or if you love dogs and by any chance you come here for two months with your pet, come over here to this neighborhood. So they ask me all the questions that I have never imagined. So yes, mm -hmm. over there, every three times a week, I do these live streams that they can ask me anything. That's great. So much, so much great information to share. So, and thank you so much for sharing information with us today. I really appreciate it. And um, looking forward to, I hope to meet you in person when I go next in March, fingers crossed. And yeah. then we'll do an in-person video interview and, or maybe a tour or something like that. It will be my pleasure, Mark. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I hope that this information is useful for anyone. Thank you so much. And we will stay in touch. Safe Perfect. travels. Safe.